Hello friends, in this video, let's quickly talk about how to create some sample database and a couple of tables in the SQL Server 2019. In the previous videos, we talked about how to do the installation and how to identify the version and what is the difference between SSMS and uh, SQL Server originally. Okay, so let's quickly go to the uh, SQL Server Management Studio and connect to the server and start doing the a couple of sample databases and uh, tables. So let's uh, go to um, uh, Windows and type SSMS. So once you type SSMS, you will get SQL Server uh, Management Studio uh, version like 18. Uh, okay, so once you click on it, it, it might take a while to open if you are opening for the first time. If you already opened a couple of times, it, it connects uh, very fast. Okay, so this is my SQL Server Main Studio, which I connected already to the server. So the name of the, uh, the server is Venkat on PC and the version SQL Server is 15.0. It means that SQL Server 2019. Okay, this is the backend version 15.0. Okay, so let's uh, 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 quickly go to the new query and create a database. So you can create a databases in, in multiple ways. So let me quickly tell you how to create a database in the easiest way is simply right click on the database, click on new database. So once you uh, click on a new database, you will get a, a, a window like this and it lasts for the name. So name of the database. So I'm going to create name of the database is sample. Okay, once you uh, provide the name here, so based on the name, you will get uh, two lines here. So one is the sample. Okay, and here, so name of the uh, logical file name is sample and you, you can see uh, file type is rows data, file group is primary file size is initial size is 8 and auto growth is by 64 MB unlimited and the path you have to specify here. And the second one is log file. Okay, so in the log file sample underscore log whatever the name you give you will get it. If you want to change you can change it but the best practice is whatever the name you are giving the database name better to maintain the same names so that when you go to the file system it is very easy to identify these files belongs to the sample database. And here a log file group is by default not applicable you can put it even and initial size is 8 MB I can change it to 1 MB or I can change it to 8 GB it's up to me but I need to specify the size in MBs and auto growth I can restrict here okay I can by, by clicking on this I can restrict here limited to MB or I can do unlimited because I am not going to perform major operations on the database I can put it as unlimited now, I, nothing to worry uh, the, uh, on a space in my server that's the reason why I'm going with unlimited but in some cases, if you want to restrict to the specific size, you can put it. Even the log also, you can keep it a uh, restriction. But I'm okay if this is my personal box. I know I'm not going to do anything. So if you want any, some secondary files, you need to click on add or there's other ways by doing that, I'll tell you the later. And the owner by default, it goes as a default. Who will be the system administrator will be the, uh, not system, SQL administrator will be the owner of it. By default, I'm going to keep it as key default. Okay, I, I, I'll go with these options and click on OK. This is the one way of creating a database. Okay, sample has been created here. <laughs> the second way of creating a database is, let's click on new query. <coughs> Once you click on new query, you'll get a window like this. Okay, so you can simply use create database <coughs> uh, examples. I'm going to put it as name of the database examples. So ideally, so this one line is enough to create a database, but <coughs> so better to specify where do you want to put the log file, where do you want to put the data file, which I showed you two files. So if I click like this by default, it goes into the C drive where the software has been installed in that drive only it will go. If I do not want to go in the drive, then better to specify the file path here, log file and data file. You can put it in different drives all the way. There is no problem. This is the second way of creating database. Let's click on execute. You can see here. So commands completed successfully, completion time is so and so and the time also you can see this. And once you refresh coming to this here and click on refresh, you can see sample and examples. And if you want to see the files, let's click on properties and go to here, whatever the option I showed you there, you'll get the similar one. Examples, example and score log and here unlimited, limited to there is a very si big size you can see limited to this and the file path and file names and all this. So by default, it will go into that, the place where the software has been installed. <coughs> okay, so this is the examples one. So this is how we created databases. So if you want to change the file paths, you can change even now as well. So you want to put it in a D drive or X drive, Y drive, whatever the drive you want, you can change it. 
okay you can do at any point of time but we'll talk about uh, that uh, later stages now we created a database so then let's go for a tables like how to create a tables <coughs> so first of all let's expand any of the database and see what are all the options we have so once you expand any of the databases you can see database diagrams we'll talk about tables views external resources synonyms programmability service broker storage security there is no change actually the same options you used to have even in the earlier versions so we'll talk about tables <coughs> views and all later one by one so here once you expand the tables here you can see if you already have any of the tables you can see those tables so currently it is empty database i can see only system tables file tables external tables graph tables we'll talk about what is these options so if you observe these table options with the earlier version you might see little difference we'll talk about one by one slowly then how to create a table here similarly i showed you two ways of creating a database even tables also you can create in multiple ways simply i'll show you for the first way by using designer ssms designer second way i'll create a table by using a query <clears throat> now right click on a table and click on new click on table so once i click on a table here i'll get this option but here i don't get a place where to store okay why because so all the tables will go and sit into the data file data file already been created on the c drive i cannot specify the location of a table here okay but but they in 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 some cases while doing a partition while doing a, a, a file groups so that time i can specify that i'll talk about slowly later now let's go let's go on a table creation here so i'll create a very basic table so with the name of employee okay so i'm going to put it as idmp okay so idmp obviously will be numeric okay yellow nulls no i don't want the nulls let's come back to the here id employee as um, uh, emp name let's make it as emp name so make it as a uh, var care of 50 nulls next um, location uh, make it as a uh, var care of uh, 50 that's okay uh, next uh, department i'll pick it as department id okay so department id uh, make it as uh, numeric okay so let's keep it that whatever you want let's save this how to save it you can simply press on the control s so till now we did not give a place uh, uh, we did not get a chance to give a name of the table okay then how to give the name of the table once you press control s or save button here it will ask you for what of the what is the name of the table okay so by default it it shows you the table underscore one so but i don't want to go with that uh, table underscore one name it should be a, a meaningful name to my table so i'm going to make it as emp or employee or employee details whatever the name you feel it's good then give that name let's click on okay so once you click on okay let's come to the tables and refresh here you will get that table name here db1 db.emp the db is a schema name we'll talk about later <clears throat> so you can see the icon also this is represents a table actually this is one way of creating a table now how to create another table by using query is let me quickly come here right click and click on new query here i am going to put a query to create a table so ideally use a query to create a database or to create a table that is the best way of doing that but i am showing you multiple ways just to show you the uh, ways that's it now just simply write create you want to create anything in sql server you have to use create statement create table name of the table so i, I created a emp right i'll put a student okay so i'll put a student open um, parenthesis close parenthesis at the end and in the middle let's write the columns so student id or id student whatever it is so int i'm going to put it as int come on next one is uh, student name okay so where care of um, uh, 50 ideally uh, i i go keywords with a um, upper case letters okay that's the reason why i'm i'm using that even you can go with a, a lower case letter so it's up to you next a student um, marks simply i'm going with the marks i'm going with a numeric okay so 18 comma there will talk about what is 18 comma 0 and all okay so this is a syntax in creating a, um, a table by using query so once you are done let's select this and click on execute it so here it don't ask for the name of the table i already gave the name of the table so in earlier option when you click on save or control s so it asks for the name of the table but here it don't ask why because 
I already gave the name here. Okay, and already gave all the uh, enough information. Let's select this, select this um, uh, part of the um, uh, statements and click on execute. Once you click on execute, you will get it. Commands completed successfully. So if there is any issue, you'll get in a red color. I'll show you that as well. Completion time. Now, now I want to create the same table again. See, in entire DB, you can create one table once only. You cannot duplicate the same table again. Maybe columns might be different, but still it won't tell of you. So name of the table is unique in the entire DB and name of the database also unique in the entire server. I see if you see, I have two databases, examples and sample. I cannot create one more database with the same name. It fails. It shows error message. In the same way, let me first show you the student table. I already have a student table. Let me try to execute the same. I, I, I'm just trying to show you the error message. What kind of error message I'm going to get here. Click on execute. So once I click on execute, so student table already there, you can see it. There is an already an object named student in the database. If I simply change student one, will that work? Obviously work because name of the table changed now. Let's click on execute. You can see here. Okay. So let's quickly change this. Yeah, you can see it, but it, it, it don't bother about my SQL engine doesn't bother about what kind of columns you are using inside the table. Maybe same columns. If you already have the other table, it don't bother about much. It simply check for the name of the table. Okay, so that's how you create the databases. That's how you create the tables. But table name or database name is unique. Database names are unique in the server. Table names are unique in the database. So that's how I do create the tables and databases. So that's all about it. See you in the next video. Thank you.